Welcome back, everybody, to Deeper Dive. We're with Pastor yeah, James talking yeah. about the weekend's message. Um, James tackled this weekend the, uh, the, the everyone's favorite message, money and finances. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I feel like did a very tactful way of doing it because you didn't beat around the bush. Like I said, in the last Mondays, um, you went straight at it, and I appreciate that. I think it does people a disservice when we try to just sneak it in on people in the middle of some other message. Um, I'm glad that you, you did it the service you did. You said something that I feel like I, it's hard to disagree with, but I think ruffled some people's feathers and probably made them upset. The quote you said is this, there is a relationship between the way you handle your money and your devotion to God. And Point I, blank. I, it was very, very pointed. It was, a, that was not a, not a shotgun. It was a rifle shot, one, one bullet. And I, I, I want you to explain that as you sort, it makes sense. But I imagine there's people out there that are saying, I'm just, I wasn't made to be a good money manager. I wasn't taught well. I love God with all my, all my heart, but I'm just terrible at managing money. It's not fair for you to say that. What would you say? Well, I think there's a difference between a bad money manager and the person that would have to say that would have to answer a couple of questions for me. Are you in debt? Yes. Do you, do you give God your first and your best? Yes. Right. We, they would have to answer those questions. And if they, yeah. if they answer those questions, they might be a bad money manager in the eyes of the world, right. but they wouldn't be a bad money manager in the eyes of God. Now, if a person's in debt, they can't give God their first and their best. Mm -hmm. They hoard, they spend more than they make. Yeah. Then it would, it would say something about where do you at the end of the day, find your security. That's, that's I alluded important. to this. Point blank, I alluded to this. I said, what I kept on hearing throughout the week after Wednesday was these people are trying to take away my way of living. These people are trying to take away my stuff. And I thought to myself, people can take away what stuff? Like what stuff are people trying to take away as it were? And we see it on both sides of the aisle. You're yeah. trying to take away my stuff. You're trying to take away my lifestyle. Well, as belongers, the stuff we don't, we're stewards. Right. Good fancy word of saying we're overseers. It's like God has given us this stuff and said, you manage it, use it, expand it, give it away until I get back. And so if we're stewards, then the stuff is not ours. But, but so, so when I start to talk about that, if you, I said something like this, if you are um, ill balanced in your finances, it's an indicator of you being ill balanced in your spiritual life. Right. And I just agree with that. I agree with that 100% because I went on to say that Jesus basically said this, where your treasure is, there your heart is also. Yeah, and what we usually find with people with ill balance is that they have messed up on those three laws yeah. of balance, right? And so the, it comes back on them. So those three laws, once again, reference point, kind of constant connection, and clear objective. Yeah, I, I was going to say you doubled down on your statement because you said right after that, there's a relationship between your use of money and your condition of your heart. Yes. And so... I mean, everything that you're saying is like, it, you're separating the fact that you may not know how to manage money, but that can be remedied, mm -hmm. right? You can remedy your knowledge of money management, but to, you, you can't take a class that, that makes you love God more than money. That's a decision you have to make, right? Yeah. And, and I think it's what you said is security, priorities, and things like that. What, one of the things I wrote down, and, and I, I usually write a lot down that I want to say to you, this particular message, I only wrote one thing down because it's Sorry. the one that stuck, that stuck out to me the most, was you kept, you kept hammering home this thing saying that we're worried about people taking our stuff, right? Taking our, either our freedom or our, our, our finances, our financial security, our this, our that, whatever, taxing us more, all these things. Like somebody's going to take our things. And I, and I said value – um, val it's a value issue. What, what is truly valuable? Mm -hmm. And I think because you were talking about things that people ascribe value to, but, but that's, again, if you look at gold and platinum and silver and diamonds, they're worthless unless somebody mm -hmm. thinks they're valuable. Boom. 
Yeah. And I, and I think there, that, that's the thing. We have fallen into the trap of, of letting somebody else tell us what's valuable, but we don't believe what God says, which he says, you're valuable. Exactly. Right. And, 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 and that's the thing. So we have that, what a great insidious lie we've fallen into because we believe that everything around us is valuable and that's what makes us valuable. And God says, that's all trash because it can be burned mm-hmm. by a fire tomorrow. The one thing that matters is you. And yeah. That's really what, what I got as you were talking, man, that was the point that kept coming back to me because I felt like when Jesus said that, what you said, again, where your heart is, your, where your treasure is, your heart will be also was not a condemnation by Jesus, but more like imploring yes. saying, I wish you knew your value. Yeah. Right. And, and, I, and I, that's the thing that really kind of stuck out to me. Is that sort of when Jesus, yeah, talked, I, 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 I don't think, and I said this, I didn't say it in this way. I practiced this in, in, in this way, but I don't know if I said it this way. The Lord Jesus Christ don't give a rat's behind. You did say rat's about behind. your money. And my mind upconverted that to a different word, so I really hold you responsible for making <laughs> uh, the curse uh, in my mind. God doesn't care about your stuff and your money and, and all yeah. of this, you know, all of this stuff. What God cares about is you. Right. You, you are creating his image. And here's the problem. When we value that stuff and get our value from that stuff, platinum, gold, diamonds, real estate, retirement, we stop valuing that which is most important, which is people created in the image of God. Here's the society we live in. We live in a society that will break its neck to save a well beached up on the beach yep. and pass over people created in the image of God and leave them for dead. Yeah. That's the society that we live in. And let me tell you, last time I went to the beach, I got wrecked by a wave and washed up on the shore and nobody came to help me. So I can totally understand that. And I felt like I was like, clearly, <laughs> clearly I'm big uh, enough that somebody might see me as some sort of sea, sea mammal and help me, but they just walked right past uh, me. So uh, I, I get that, it. That is the that's the best. <laughs> that is the best comment. I just anyway, kidding. that um, did happen one I, time, but I, I got gotta, I got destroyed. I'm just laying there. Gotta, People were like, I no gotta, one asked me if I was okay. <laughs> I gotta work. I gotta work with this guy with this comedic timing. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> this man. Guy, it's a, uh, it's a, so so no. I no, get to I, the spirit. I, that's that's where we are, right? That yeah. is where we are, and um and and I wish I wish. I wish there, there was some kind of magic wand that I could wave so that the belongers at Salem Fields Community Church would understand that they are of the most value to God. Right. And, 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 God's, and God, they were so valuable <laughs> that in, in, in that, that kenosis passage, that great emptying passage, right. they were so valuable, we were so valuable that he put stuff aside and moved into the neighborhood, which we talked about in our last series. Yeah. Um, and, and not just moved into the neighborhood. <laughs> and I'm going to use a whole bunch of cliches here because they work. And was hung up for our hangups. And yeah. he came like us so that we could become like him. And died and got up on Sunday morning and sent his spirit to live inside of us, to empower us uh, in such a way that we would be truly his and be made in his likeness and become more like him every day and live with him for eternity. That's how valuable we are, but we continuously, and I understand that we have trillion dollar industry saying to us, our value is our job, our value is our home, our money, our, our investments, our or gold, our diamonds. And all these, yeah, our health, everything. Yeah. Man, it's, it, is, it's, um, it is startling. I was just thinking, if you could wave a magic wand, I mean, but literally we, the word of God is fighting um, mm-hmm. tooth and nail against a trillion dollar industry that's telling people just the opposite 24 hours a day. And mm-hmm. so we, people are like, ah, oh, you know, read my Bible five minutes today. I'm feeling really good about it. And I spent, you know, 23 hours and, and 55 minutes getting assaulted, telling me I'm worthless in five mm-hmm. minutes saying I'm worth something. Good news is that the, the, the word of God and the Holy spirit are far more powerful. The five minutes with God is far more powerful than 23 hours, but it's, it's a Here's little other thing. Let me speak to this for a second. The, the tough stuff is um, some of the people that we value the most are putting the blue light special tag on us. That's true. 
And I want to acknowledge that. I want to acknowledge that for some of us sitting and listening to this today, that the people that you valued the most, the people that were supposed to have your back, the people who were supposed to love you, have put the blue light special price tag, I'm, and I'm dating myself there, have, have made you worthless, have made you feel like you're worthless. And it's one thing to have the trillion dollar industry saying it to you. But when that's trumped by people who are the closest to you saying that to you, I can see how you start to believe the lie. Yeah. And, um, but I want to implore you to, to go check out God's word and to hear what the one who created you says about you. Um, I think is really important because I, I, you know, I've been in a situation where, you know, you got the trillion dollar industry, but you, you seem throw away to the people who are close to you. Right. And, um, and, and so then you, what I want to do is I want to find my value in athletic ability. I want to find my value in the girl that I dated. I want to find my value in working hard and making a lot of money and all of this kind of stuff. So I, I do want to acknowledge that right. sometimes that, that skewed thinking about our value takes place because people who are important to us, um, they say the same thing that we hear society at large saying to us. Yeah, and I find it interesting when Jesus and Paul and people, you know, all through scripture consistently talk about God being a friend that's closer than a brother. Yes. A friend that's closer than family because yeah. I think it, at, even then, I mean, Jesus experienced it himself when his family came to him. They're like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, come on. Why are you, what are you, <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on. Come home already. We He's know like, you. <laughs> you know, and, and Jesus like, gosh, you know, you can't even catch a break in my hometown. Right. And I think, I mean, it's funny, but Jesus experienced every single type of thing that we experienced, uh, experience on a regular basis. And he consistently pressed against that by saying, that's not true. But the, the one who made you, the one who should judge you, the one who could point his finger at, at fault in you, otherwise beckons you and says, I, let, let, me, let, me, let me take care of you. And there's a passage, you know, in the prophets that I love so much. And it's really graphic, but I feel like it tells a story. God is so upset um, at the, the uh, Israelites, and he describes them as this, as this naked and battered woman on the street. Right. He said, I was walking along That's and I right. saw you naked and bleeding and battered on the street. Yeah. And I took you and I put my That's robe right. around you and I took you home and I bathed you, put oil in your hair, perfume, mm -hmm. rings on your fingers and feet um, and, and did your hair and made you beautiful. And I loved you. Right. Mm -hmm. And then and then you still turned on me. But <laughs> that, right. that that picture of him seeing us at our very worst and saying how I love you. Come come with me. Let me take care of you. Um, gosh, man, I mean, that's the story that keeps people from falling into that, that suicidal depression when they realize that the creator of the universe, the one who should judge them, doesn't. I think, I think in, order for us not to, to. That in order for us to experience that, I, I love that metaphor, right? In order for us to experience that, I think we got to get to a place of vulnerability where we say, here, my, my, my issue is. I don't feel loved. I don't feel worthy. I don't feel valued. And we got to put that on the table because I, I believe that once we put that on the table and say, Lord, I don't feel loved. I don't feel valued. I don't feel cared for. Then I got, I believe God in that confession, yeah. God can do something with that. Nice. Because I think we, and it's, it's not that God doesn't know that we have to admit that to ourselves. We don't admit that to ourselves. What we say is we need more stuff. Right. I, 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 need, I need more value. I need the corner office. I need this, 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 and this. And we don't really say that's the real need. The real need of my heart is I really need to feel loved and accepted right. and valued. And, and, um, and I can try to get it. The, as the old song goes, looking for love in all the wrong places. Yeah. So. Eddie Murphy said, Wook and Penub, but that was. Uh, that was <laughs> Well, I'm going to end that segment on that, man. That, that's, a, that's a very powerful thought. And I, I do, I really, really believe that when we talk about finances, it, it should always get right to where you just went with it. Finances are once again, just an expression of, of what's going on in here. Right. It's not, 
you know, even though you want to make it more important than it is, truly, it's just a, it's just you waving a flag, right? Um, but I appreciate this session, James. It's very, very powerful. And folks, I hope you rewind this and listen to that last part several times because I think it's, it, that's the answer, right? When you're, when you're looking for the answer, you know, why is life going this way? What, can, what changes can I truly make? How can I, I be better in 2021? You need to start right there, right? Define the problem, go to God, do the hard work. There it Nehemiah. is. Define yep, season, the problem. Uh, if that's the problem, you define the problem. Now take the problem to God and then yep. do the hard work. Right on. There, well, there seems to be a biblical answer for everything. It's magical. <laughs> All right, folks. Thanks for watching Deeper Dive. Yeah, we'll yeah. catch you on Friday at 2 o'clock. We'll wrap this up. Don't forget, tomorrow, Thursday, there's the finish-up episode from the, the little in-betweener that we did. You won't want to miss it. Um, it's pretty powerful, I think. So uh, thanks again for watching. Bye-bye.